All right. So do you guys run through the agenda or did you want me to do that? I'm not familiar with how your commission works. Yeah, so the first thing I think we'll do is just call the roll. Um, okay. And I can do that. Kelly used to call everybody, but I think we can see where it's being recorded. We're all here. Yes, okay. All three members, Therese Sweeney Drake. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, Keith Thomas. Steve Delat. And then Rachel, why don't you introduce yourself as a new, our new secretary? I'm Rachel, Rachel Mullen. Secretary to the commission, we're happy to have you. Thank you. I've and, got my pen, I'll take notes. Okay. And um, Chiefs, do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Dustin Thank Rogers, you. police and chief. Bob Perko, fire chief. I'm Luke McConville, I'm the law director. And I see the mayor joined us. Hi everyone, I'm the mayor, Michael Brennan. Good <laughs> to see everyone, sorry I'm just a touch late. I was on a phone call and how uh, are you? Good to see everyone. Okay, so we're here for our first monthly meeting. Um, Rachel, you did a nice job. So thanks for getting this to us and um, you know, I was able to ask Rachel a couple questions today because she got it to us yesterday in a timely manner and Steve too. So that worked out nicely. Thanks for your patience as I learn. Sure. Um, so we have an agenda and I think we will just go through the agenda items. Um, I don't know if we also have agenda items I know from our November 18th meeting do we want to go and check on those two? I, that's really a question to both chiefs. Um, or are you are you going through those issues from the, the meeting in November? Are you working with Rachel on getting those um, up to date? Because I, I noticed that not all of those things were on this week's agenda. Um, I, I might be able to answer that question and then the chiefs can jump in if they okay. think that I'm um, mischaracterizing things. But um, since our last meeting, um, we've met internally, I think three times. Um, and during our internal meetings, we're sort of uh, doing a, a couple of things. One is we're um, talking about the logistics of administering the tests that the chiefs um, want to see administered. And that is anything from planning a, a, a proposed calendar to actually going out and contacting um, mm -hmm. the vendor on the one hand, or, or for example, um, contacting the public school system to see if we can do a facility. Um, so so we're, we're sort of tackling various logistical issues um, um, Mayor, I'm a little bit concerned we're going to be Zoom bombed, so I just want to throw that out there. I, uh, I have I have it in a waiting room, and um, I have everyone in a waiting room that I have to okay. to let them in. So I'm keeping an eye on that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel like it's going to appear and show us something we all don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I have my. <laughs> uh, I can toss them if need be. I'm keeping my eye on the waiting room too. Okay. Just just wanted to. I know we have to let everyone in, but yeah, okay. Um, so, so we've been having those, those meetings internally that have concentrated, number one, on logistics, and then number two, on changes, I would say, as a general, general matter, changes to either the rules um, themselves or changes to our internal processes. And the fact is, is that none of us has really ever done this before. So we're all kind of learning together in an attempt to create what we hope will be a system going forward to make this easier um, the next times around. Um, the items that are on your agenda tonight are all of the things that um, we feel should be put in front of the Civil Service Commission so that you know what we're doing as we work toward eventually having you 
authorize test dates and and then ultimately authorize lists um, for selection. So I, I don't know, Dustin and, and Bob, uh, Chief Rogers, Chief Perko, if you wanna jump in and add anything, um, that's, that's the perspective from the law director. I would also echo um, that it's consistent with a lot of the work we've been doing. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress in, in, in this process is, is new to all of us actually being involved in, in this planning. Um, and, and getting the logistics coordinated for these these various tests, and you know it's been it's been very refreshing in my perspective. Um, and I think the administration has done a lot of good work uh, over the past uh, three meetings or so um, to really get the, the ball rolling with uh, recurring testing and um, any modifications to to rules that we would possibly like to see proposed uh, to enhance the process. So, yeah, I would just echo. Um, what both of them said that uh, re refreshing is an understatement. There, there's been a lot of work in a short period of time done, and I, I'm looking forward to uh, new processes here that will make things current and more streamlined and hopefully easier for everyone in the long run. And uh, I think we're definitely on the right track and doing some really good things here. So I appreciate everyone's uh, collaboration and thank you. And, and also the commission as well, you know, meeting with us at least, you know, having a day plan every month. You know, I think that's really gonna be beneficial and, and we're very grateful for your time and effort to, to, to assist us with streamlining and creating a process for uh, civil service testing that, that meets our operational needs. So thank you. Yeah, that's great news. Congratulations on that. Okay, good. So I think then we can go to um, Item number one, approval of the police department entrance exam notice. Um, so do you wanna talk about that? I'm going to my... Yeah, Chief, Chief, do you want me to give the overview and then have you jump in or do you, or do you just wanna... Uh, why, why don't I give an overview and then you, you add, add to it? So um, we, we had a lot of discussion about um, the idea that we not um, simply have one um, possible avenue for a prospective um, applicant for a position in the police department to meet their physical agility requirement testing. We wanted to um, provide an additional um, opportunity or opportunities for, for, so that we could essentially have more uh, so that we could widen the applicant pool potentially. And um, we, we also had discussions internally about whether or not this was even a civil service commission matter. Um, the discussion being, is this just purely administrative? And in the interest of transparency and, and involving the commission in what we're doing as, as we're doing it step-by-step, step, we wanted to put this issue on the agenda, um, both for purposes of letting you know what, what we're considering, why we're considering, but also asking for your approval. We don't actually have the, the template notice ready to go out yet. It the template notice will resemble prior year's notices. And I know that Rachel did provide a notice from 2018 that will be updated and tailored to um, the specific test that we're going out for. Um, but we did want to put in front of you new, uh, the new police physical agility requirement language that we will incorporate into our notice and that will provide a broader um, set of opportunities for applicants to meet those requirements. Okay, Chief, you're muted. Is that accurately describing it, Chief? Yes, that's correct. Um, just a little more specifically, we've historically taken the Tri-C Agility Test Certificate of Completion as our only uh, method uh, or certifying body for somebody that wants to take the entrance test, which all that does is confirm that they've passed what's considered the Cooper Standards at a 30th percentile uh, level. and. In my perspective is based on some of the applicants that came in and got some of the applications in 2018, they were from 
you know, not from this area. So for their ability to come in to take a test, get an application and come back also before then to take an agility test, logistically it was very difficult for, for people. So this will definitely enhance uh, the potential candidate pool. And we, we would be looking to take um, any type of uh, documentation of completion for the same standards that we always have just beyond uh, just the Tri-C um, certificate. I thought it was a great idea. I mean, from what I saw, and then I, I did ask Rachel for a prior notice because I didn't have one in my file. So, um, yeah, I think that I think it will work as long as you, that Cooper standard is the the standard that is that the same standard that Tri C uses when they Correct. do their tests. So yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, I thought it'd be great. Yeah, I agree. So I don't think we have to pass on that. I think you're right on that, Luke. Um, but I we appreciate you coming back to us. And I, um, you know, that's what I think I said to Rachel. It's like, because I, reading one of the rules, it says that the posting has to be inside City Hall, you know, but now with COVID. So <laughs> you got to do it electronically. Right. <laughs> Right. You guys looking at the rules like that too? On we are, you know, yeah, I, you know, I, I think because we have some urgency with respect to getting these calendars put together and, and, and getting our notices out and getting the ball rolling so that we uh, can administer the tests, it, the rules themselves are taking a little bit of a back seat, but we're going to tackle the rules um, kind of as we go in, in small bites and certainly there are going to be more rules um, that are going to be modified and that we're going to be asking for, you know, your consideration. Does, hey, Luke, does that have to go through collective bargaining? The civil service rules do not have to go through collective bargaining. Uh -huh. um, now, I, I say that, but, but the, the reality, as you may recall, is that a collective bargaining agreement is going to Trump um, a civil service commission rule if they conflict. So we, we need to be mindful of that. Um, but the rules themselves are, are within the commission's purview. Okay. So um, I, I think that uh, when I was just looking over them briefly, I a couple of things. So I think if we look at our rules in the next you know, meetings, let's give our comments to Rachel and she can get them to, you know, we could say, hey, gosh, we noticed this rule. Maybe whoever's looking at with you, Rachel and Luke, we could give our input, you know, at this time too. So, um, so the next issue on the agenda is the notice and waiver of potential conflict of interest um, with Clancy and Associates. So, um, you know, I was thinking, would we have a problem? I know that one um, employee said he's not going to take that test, but um, would there be a problem if if he tried to change his mind and take the test? Do you guys, I mean, have we, because I've noticed we've hired Clancy before. We just used them in 2019. I don't know if that issue's come up before with any of the test providers or not. Um, I don't know if we have a city policy on the conflict. Um, we don't, I think, I think you're raising some good questions. Um, Cause I don't think a person should be prohibited from taking a test just because there's a familial relationship, right? Right, and, 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 and you're hitting on the same concern that, that has been discussed privately. Um, and again, out of an abundance of caution, um, we did solicit um, written confirmation from this particular individual that he's not planning to sit, but I do think we need a policy going forward um, you know, that we'll have to give some thought to. Um, I, I think there could be you know, a potential um, conflict down the road. I mean, that's foreseeable now and we need to address it. 
Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, I'm sure the city has conflict of interest policies through state and federal funding. I don't know if it's in, you know, specific, but, or with other contractors. Um, I know on another board I'm in who gets federal funds and state funds, you know, we have a federal conflict, we have a conflict of interest policy and, um, you know, when there is a conflict, it's brought to the board of trustees, full disclosure, and they can either waive it or not. You know, I think it depends on the, the conflict, but I think that's something that we may want to look into. Um, or unless you have a citywide conflict of interest policy for other contracts, you know, I don't know. Well, and, and in lieu of a specific policy that governs this issue, we were bringing it to the commission and asking for a waiver of any potential conflict, even though we don't think there is one in this case because the officer in question is, has uh, confirmed in writing, we, we still want the, the commission to chime in and say, essentially that you're comfortable with Clancy and Associates administering the test. Well, we've used them before. Um, when we hired him in 2019, I looked at it, this, it was this, um, that was for the police lieutenant exam. So they're actually charging the same fee they did in 2019 for that the administration of that exam. Um, I don't keep all the files, you know, so, but I think we've hired Clancy before. Um, you know, their name's not new. You know, we're looking to you. I asked Rachel if we, we, you went out to any other proposals. She did say they did go to one other company um, who was not, was basically unresponsive. Um, so, um, you know, I don't, as long as we had good results and we didn't hear any bad results from the Clancy test administered in 2019. What are your thoughts, Steve and Keith? Uh, no, I mean, if we haven't had any issues in the past, with them and I, no one's brought that to our attention. I don't, I don't see a problem. I actually did an internet search just to see if there was any litigation against Clancy because oh, good. obviously I'm always curious about these things, you know? Uh, and I was very impressed. There was next to none. Uh, and, and I think as the chiefs noted, they uh, handle these exams for uh, many other communities. I mean, I, I just, you know, when you do an internet search, you bring up all kinds of unrelated stuff, but um, there were cities out of state that were using them as well. So uh, okay. that was reassuring. Yeah, so do you want us to um, formally approve the hiring of them or are you gonna come back to us? I wasn't quite sure. Well, I, I think we want to, again, in an abundance of caution, out of out of uh, a desire for transparency, we just want to have the commission waive any potential conflict of interest. And I would ask for a motion to waive any potential conflict of interest and authorize the hiring of Clancy. Um, is there a motion to that effect? Yeah, I'll make the motion to 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 um, waive a, the potential in the event that there's a. Uh, we come to know another employee of the city who may take the test um, and proceed with hiring them based on their proposal that was submitted to us in our um, packet. And do we have a second? I will second that. Okay, so um, let's take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So passes unanimously. Okay. And then next on the agenda is the um, approval of the amendment to rule nine, promotion section four. I gotta pull that up uh, here. Okay. All right. I'll speak briefly about this. Um, okay. Again, if that's okay with the commission members, um, and and then turn it over to Chief Perko. Um, sure. Um, 
this is coming to you in a little bit of a formal fashion, just because I don't want to be um, cavalier about rule amendments. I think any rule amendment we make has to set forth the entire rule and then show in a red line form how it's being changed so that you know, any interested party can discern what the rule change is and, and so that the commission members you know, can evaluate the changes to the language. So it kind of resembles a resolution um, if you will, and then and then we can just use it as a form to record our ultimate vote, and then, you know, literally kind of cut and paste what is approved into um, an amended set of rules, you know, that we would use going forward. Um, so that that's the formatting that you see in front of you, and the rule change itself is really um, a change that again is designed to. Um, broaden the potential pool of applicants that can move on to the assessment process. Instead of it being the top eight candidates with a passing grade of at least 70% on the written exam, it's opened up so that it reads um, candidates with a passing grade of at least 70% on the written exam. Again, that opens up the opportunity for more um, folks to move on from the written to the assessment um, broadening the pool of potential applicants that the um, we uh, I'm sorry the fire chief can choose from. Chief Perko, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, everything that the law director pointed out is, is accurate. In the addition of the collective bargaining agreement for the fire department, also has a, a memorandum of understanding in it for an acting officer position. So in the event that a uh, lieutenant is, is not working, uh, we have to have someone fulfill that role. And we have a program established in the contract that indicates how we fill that position with a firefighter uh, acting in that capacity. And it's composed of a point system and part of the points allocated to that is the score of the promotional exam if the firefighter chose to take the previous exam. And we ran into a situation from the 2018 promotional where um, some of these members were unable to proceed to the second part of the promotional, the assessment portion, because of this language capping it at the eight members. And then therefore, they really only were able to receive 50% of the points um, possible to them to earn in this acting officer role. So although it didn't pertain to an, an active promotion um, in one circumstance, uh, it definitely affected it in a different circumstance as far as the acting officer program goes. Um, and, and obviously uh, to be inclusive of everyone, not only for acting officer, but an actual promotion, uh, we would not want to have this uh, restriction placed on there and give everyone an opportunity. Um, do, do any of the commission members have questions either for me or for Chief Perko? And if there uh, are I'm just, oh, go ahead. I'm just curious, what um, historically, I've never really paid attention, frankly, has been the difference between um, the top eight versus the 70% cutoff? So we're keeping the 70%. That's the uh, minimum score for passing the written. Um, the previous language said the top eight that achieved a 70% would proceed. Um, historically, there was not eight positions available to get promoted to. Um, we only have three positions of lieutenant, so foreseeably that would not be an issue. However, the acting officer program in the contract is relatively new and um, that's really where, where this is becoming, uh, could become a conflict and we want to make sure that it's not restrictive. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions, is there a motion to, oh, go ahead. I have one question. So does that mean though, on, if, if someone, say you have 10 people who pass, that's 
do do all of them then go on to the next phase so that then you would go on on a promotional exam that they there would be that assessment the next assessment stage so that like for example the Clancy um, evaluation says you know up to the first five you know it's fifty three hundred dollars and then for an additional cost of you know twenty six they'll do more so so does that come into does the budget have anything to do with it or you know that's really I don't know if that's our question that's more of a city council budgetary question or your question do you see what I'm asking there is the possibility that yeah. if more than eight people pass um, and we list this that there's that potential that it could cost more um, it's not always broken down uh, or priced out per candidate sometimes it's per hour that the company will be here um, so it's hard to say if it would actually cause an increased cause uh, cost okay. for the city but it's definitely a potential. Um, the thing that we're really looking at, if you look in the, the document provided to you in your packet, at the bottom there where the vote is, and it says uh, fire lieutenant, 50% written, 50% assessment. By putting a cap on it, people beyond the top eight are losing out on that opportunity of 50% of the percentage points. And uh, we wanna try to make that more fair. Okay. Are there any uh, any further questions from commission members? No. And, and if there are none, is there a motion to adopt the pro proposed rule change um, to civil service rule nine, section four? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll move to approve uh, approval of the amendment of the civil service rule um, section nine promotion section four specifically I guess eliminating the prior language of top eight uh, from the previous language uh, to now be not be included in the amended language I'll second that all those anyone opposed no. It passed unanimously. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is the approval of amendments to civil rule uh, number three, application section five, and civil service rule four, examination section four, and civil service rule nine, promotion sections two to correct. Okay, let me look at that. Yeah, and, and um, this is a, a rule change that's really designed to update the rules to reflect the reality that um, in our fire department, um, we have uh, fourth grade firefighters currently. Um, so the, the rule as it was in existence um, or as it is in existence currently does not reflect the actual structure in the fire department um, because they've moved to um, a fourth grade tier and so this is just merely meant um, to capture all of the references to um, that third grade rung and, and substitute fourth grade for third grade so is there a third grade is there still a third grade or is it no it's just because I know the timing to make those promotions is all within the same, the first and second stays. So is there a third grade or? Yes, there's there's a total of four different grades, okay. which had been the case historically. And then it went down to three, three different grades. And then uh, in a contract uh, negotiations dating back to 2014, um, the, I don't know if that was the actual contract it was established, but that's the one that I have up here. Uh, a fourth grade was added, but the rules okay. did not reflect that change. Okay. And, I, and I think, Therese, the way the rules worked was that if you didn't 
get promoted to the first grade level within four years, then you were out. Right. And, and so we've kept that four year time frame. Okay. Um, that hasn't changed, but but the other references have changed. Okay. And does that, my, my question I asked, does that still work then within that four year with that four grade? That's yes. that, that, okay, good. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to, to, well, does anyone have any other questions for the chief or for Luke? I do not. Okay. No, I'll make a motion to approve the amendments to the civil rules um, at rule number three four, and um, rule nine and other appropriate ones to uh, reflect the fourth grade firefighter position. I'll second that. Okay. Any um, anyone opposing it? No. No. So it passed it unanimously. Okay. The next issue on the agenda is the authorization to post um, applications electronically and to accept electronic submissions. So, does, Luke, do you want to talk to? We talked about it a little bit, but sure. Just, yeah, and, and and this is again sort of twofold. It, it, one is we're going to have to go through the rules, as I mentioned before, and, yeah. and, and update them to reflect current technology. Um, this is probably a change. This is certainly a change that we need during COVID, but it's probably a change that we want to maintain going forward because this is how business is done now. Um, um, so we, we will have to go through the rules, number one. But number two, we, we want to be able to post applications electronically and accept electronic submissions um, for um, our upcoming tests this year. Um, it, again, in the interest of COVID, uh, we don't want people in and out of City Hall. Um, it's just not prudent. I wonder if, um, for, for many years, I was a member of the county uh, Law Directors Association, I'm, I'm wondering if there, there's any kind of like working group on all the electronic stuff from a county, you know, citywide issue to kind of get that input and see how they're, you know, dealing with it. I know that from a corporate standpoint, you know, the corporate laws were amended about 10 years ago to allow a lot of electronic um, you know, electronics meetings and notices and all that kind of stuff. So there's information out there. It's just someone might have already done this work for you, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be that way. It's going to, it's just the way it is. Right. So I think it makes sense to do it. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, that the sort of corollary, um, provision in, in the Ohio Revised Code that is always going to apply is, is uh, the public records law. And um, this sort of electronic exchange of data isn't going to impact one way or another, whether something's a public record. Um, you know, the public records law has already been updated to capture um, electronic data. Mm -hmm. um, th this in my mind is really you know, first and foremost, a public health issue during 2021. And then secondly, I think going forward, it's just a matter of convenience and, and a matter of acknowledging the way business is done now. So how do you get, how do you capture the person who may not, you know, technology, maybe young people, it's not really an issue, but you keep hearing about the technology divide. Sure. Do, well, I, I don't think some we're press looking, or plain dealer or, you know, I mean, to get that broader group yeah i don't know the answer to that i think that's worth discussing um and putting a rule forth and then letting commission members ultimately decide i mean i don't think we're looking to do anything that would narrow our applicant pool oh right um you know i, I think one could argue that the way our rules are written is a little sort of old-fashioned um 
I, I think advertising, you know, can occur in a variety of different ways in, in an attempt to, again, um, get as many applicants as qualified applicants as we can. So you're saying this, this wouldn't be the only means it, 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 it just gives you the opportunity to, to you to utilize this, but doesn't exclude other means. Is that what you're saying? More or less? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and we're just, you know, this year, we're not wanting to encourage people to come to City Hall um, and, and, and walk in and interact with um, whoever's sitting at the front desk. It, it mm. just, no, I get it. it. Yeah. No, I think it makes sense. And it's kind of what the both chiefs have been wanting to make a broader application out. And I think this is the way the question is, how, how big can you do it? Like what public mediums can you use without violating public, you know, with being, knowing that it's a public record and, you know, all of that, but getting out there because who reads newspapers in a certain generation really, you know? <laughs> Who goes, who goes and looks at bulletin boards at public libraries anymore, you know? Yeah, so, um, yeah I, I'm all for it. I, I, I think it'd be great. It will probably help diversify the, the candidates and um, it'll be good. Hey, Luke, just out of curiosity, um, these applications are all public record. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Except for, you know, personal identifiers, right? I mean, well, right. I, I, I don't know if we ask for social and that kind of thing. Th that would not be public record. Um, but other information is public record. Who's applying um, education certifications? Those are public record. But the, the question on that then, but I mean, getting getting the applications out, then the receipt of those, once they come into the city, you can do some protection of that information. Yes, and we always do. I mean, yeah. when there are questions about, um, first of all, our, our department heads are pretty sophisticated um, because they've been to public records trainings about kind of knowing and training their staffs what is public record and what isn't. So they're pretty good about saying, okay, there's been a public records request in the police department for this police report. There's an individual social security number that has to be redacted. Um, and and get, getting the police report out redacted, um, you know, in a redacted form. There are other instances where based on the incident occurred or based on the fact that, for example, there may be a minor involved um, that matter gets referred through the law department. And then we're vetting the document for whether it's a public record or not. Um, and if it's a public record, whether any part of it um, should be redacted. So internally, um, when there's a question, department heads are running documents through legal. Um, but as a general proposition, they're pretty good about uh, knowing what the state of the law is um, in terms of disclosure versus um, non-disclosure. When there's a question about that, it, it comes through legal. Anything else? Any new business? No, I, th I think we would ask for a vote from the commission to authorize posting applications electronically and accepting electronic submissions. Um, sure, I'll make a motion to authorize the posting of them electronically and accept them electronically. And I will second that. Any, I guess I'd like to ask just one ca caveat and come back to us on, um, I mean, I know you're still doing some of the research on it. So whatever, you know, restraints or confines you need to put on that, you know, to protect the um, privacy of any applicants that are necessary. You know, if you need to come back to us, you do, but um, 
Otherwise, and, I, yeah, and, I, and just for the record, I think the way this is going to work is we're going to put our application on our website. So um, John Doe is interested in applying. Um, he can go to a tab on our website, click on the application, download it. Um, he can then fill it out and then email it. I think he'll be emailing it back to either one of the chiefs or to Rachel. I don't know that we've worked out those logistics yet, but that exchange where the, the applicant is providing the information is not going to be put up on our website. That's yeah. going to be an email. Now, someone from the public can request um, copies of the applications that were submitted, and then we would do our internal public record um, review. Oh, well, that but, makes it, sense. but it's not going to be readily available just to anyone up on our website. Someone would have to ask for the, the request, a request after it to take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But if we if we like continue to hold these meetings electronically and, you know, we then do a certified list, you know, all that's public and that's going to sure. they'll be open to the public in the sure. sense on our website, you know. That's right. Well, and, and that's the stuff I is, don't know. Yeah. And the truth is, Therese, that in the past, um, I don't, I don't want to say that things weren't available. I don't know whether they were available or not. They should have been if they weren't. But um, someone would physically have to come in and ask for the file. Right now, it's a little different just because things are more open, I think. But, um, okay, does this, does this author, well, let's take a vote on this. Um, yeah, I, I'm in favor. All in favor? Aye. And no objections? So, None. Okay, so it passes. Um, you don't need our authorization or anything to go forward and um, like post something with the different professional associations with the public safety directors or like posting the applications with them or anything. I don't believe so, no. The rules yeah, okay. don't call for that. We're we're walking through our administrative process and um, you know, part of the exercise here is, um, you know, number one, transparency. Number two, this is helping us internally learn how to um, quickly and easily administer the process from start to finish. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, terrific. If there's nothing else, then we'll um, adjourn and see you next month. Let me just clarify something on item one. Did you just pass, you just passed it? There wasn't a vote on that, right? Right, I, I think on that's item right. one, commission members were saying, we agree that's purely administrative. Okay. We have no objection to your doing that. Go ahead and do it. We're not gonna okay. vote on it, but but we're good with it. Is that right. accurate? That's, that's right. accurate. Okay, thanks. I just wanna make sure I have that right. Okay. So we should we should adjourn by motion. Okay, well I'll make a motion to adjourn. Any seconds? I'll second. Okay. And all in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, motion to adjourn and passes and everybody have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. If you want to send, if you take minutes and want to send them to me to look at before you finalize, I'd be glad to. Sure, I'll get them over to you tomorrow. Okay, all right, bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.